Hello everybody, my name is Ken of Beans and welcome back to the Silent Age. Now, we're on an island. God knows where, but we're on an island. We just got popped out of this hospital. Danger, crocodiles. Oh God. Where's the crocodile hunter when you need him? Too bad he's... Hmm. What is this? Nice. Some green goo? Oh. Mechanical Jack. What's that? Um, no idea. Attached to sphincter. Oh. Ew. It's a poo poo pump. That's gross. Why would we need a poo poo pump? The box and label are pretty faded from the sun, so I can't make out who it's to or from. It's been sitting here for a pretty long time. I guess nobody will care if I take a peek inside. Well, let's see what's inside. It's a trophy for outstanding excellence in the field of experimental physics. I wouldn't drink out of it, but it's at least a few hours taught me anything. It's probably I'll find use for it. Oh no, the sun is down. We can't. No. We can't use our time travel abilities with the sun down. A flooded boat. Ah. Uh. Oh, a mailbox. I didn't check the mailbox. How foolish of me. R. Lambert. This is definitely the right place. Oh, I can't use this time. Man. Maybe if I stand at the very edge. Maybe if I reach out into the sunset. Maybe it'll give some light. Okay. With the flooded boat. Okay, maybe I use my poo poo. Man. Hmm. Trophy. Always use trophy. All drained and no holes in the bottom either. I guess it was just rainwater. What the heck? Oh, I scooped it out. Cool. Let's get on this boat. No oars. I need to get the motor going. Now we use it. Oh, oh, oh. We need to uh, siphon. Okay, we need to siphon the uh, um, gas out of the ambulance, and then, uh, ah, there it is, okay, see, there, the cap is still on, well geez, I didn't think I'd have to do everything in this game, there we go, now, okay, so I was right, they were just, being really rude and making me do all this extra stuff. Okay, there we go. That should do. It. Now let's uh, let's hop on our way. When to... I was a little lad, and so my mother told me, way haul away, way. we'll haul away, Joe. Waiting for the beat drop, and I, I guess I got carried away there. Hmm. The spikes are unusually pointy. Almost if someone had. Wow, I'm so cool. I am so cool. There we go. Garden shears. And there is a crocodile right there. God help me, there's a crocodile. What's gonna happen? Is he gonna eat me? Ah, what the? Uh, I'm at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I use it with these flowers? Anything in here? Empty. Okay. Maybe do I go back out of the hole in the fence and cut something off, such as this sign? this warning sign and I use it as a spear or maybe perhaps I am just thinking really too I think I'm I don't know I don't know what I'm doing wait there is yeah use it with the open hmm or c 
cut the barbed wire fence. Am I able to cut? Ah, yeah. Cut the fence and go around the crocodile. Now we're using our noggin. You know, those crocodile, that crocodile would have come after me and I would have been dead meat. Because let me tell you, those things can run fast AF. You know, I learned something and I'm going to share this information with you. If you ever, ever, ever find yourself in a situation with a crocodile and it starts running after you, run in zigzag motion. Yeah, that's right. You go straight, and then you zigzag, and then you zigzag again, and then you keep zigzagging. They don't. They, it just it just works like that. I know, I don't know how, but I read it on the survival guide handbook, and that's what you do. You're welcome. Yep, no problem. Don't have to thank me. Lucky me, it's open. Well, that's a first. I have to say. Oh, cool. Someone was making meth. Hmm. A kind of electronic thing. Well, no dip. Hmm. It looks like blueprints for the still. Hmm. Hmm. This a key. Hmm. <laughs> He's actually making moonshine. a small key with the junction box and then we're gonna fry this little clownfish in here yep I saw that one coming nice do I pick that fish up no heck no he says heck no Ugh. somebody forgot to clean the grill out here's a set of tongs though yeah we're gonna take this Delicious fish. I don't delicious think so. Bass here. Yeah, turn the power off. Then. I'm gonna go to the alligator here. Dead fish. That's so sad. Oh, Mr. Alligator, I caught you a delicious bass. Thank you for letting me pass. <laughs> the frick is this Monty Python? None shall pass. <sighs> yeah, we're just gonna do it. To heck with this. Oh, Jesus. What do we do then? I didn't see any... Oh, the still. The still. We're gonna fill it up with, with alcohol. Or whatever that stuff was. Maybe it was. Yeah, I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't know everything. Jeez. Jeez. Put the still. We're gonna fill it up. Yeah. It is alcohol. Bam. Who is your daddy? Let me ask you that right now. Who is your daddy? That's right. Can of beans is your daddy. Let's uh, use this chainsaw on the front door. <clears throat> I don't see why we couldn't have just knocked. That might have worked. Or not, but I don't know. Oh, some nice artwork. Optical illusions, I see. Hey, I saw that artwork in the Dallas Museum of Art when I went on a field trip. Nothing here except a bunch of box, a box of matches. Box of matches, shall we? Dibois. Abstract painting. There's something behind it. The gun is missing. Boy. Wine opener. I'm just letting you know right now the gun is freaking missing. That is not a good sign. Oh, wait, these stack up thick books. That's suspicious. Why are we gonna be setting this on fire? But why? Am 
my only question is, but why? Very classy. Hmm. The fire. What does it tell us? myself to myself oh and do you want missing wine bottle right there hmm. how peculiar it's like somebody actually decided to have a drink tonight A tanning bulb produces UV lights, so why not use that in order to charge the time machine? Oh. Holy smokes, that's bright. You're right. Oh, cool. No, how about I take the axe in the tree? Wait a second, how has everything changed? A barrel, this guy's still making his alcohol, huh? Looks like some kind of water collection system. Oh, he's a doomsday prepper, I see, I see! Maybe take some of these strawberries? Maybe take some of that marijuana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trap door now. Okay. They gave us a twig. Whoa, wait a second. Why is everything so different? Hmm. That's a fire extinguisher. Perhaps. Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe just... Maybe. Something's in here. And it's complete. What could it be? An oil drum? <laughs> Place this in here. Ah! Wait! And then we set wow. the twig on fire. Yes, yes, of course, of course. That was my plan all along. And then we're gonna burn those vines out of the way. I swear, no cheats, no hacks. I just know what I'm doing. I think. Until it, until it doesn't work. There we go, I got a torch. A twig chore torch. A torch twig. It's like the mixture of a tur twig and a torchic. The burning twig with the vines. And then we're gonna extinguish that. There's no water in the thing. 
Of course there's no water in it. Take some of my water if they need it. Okay, well, there we go. Let me uh, take a gulp. Ah, delicious. Delicious and nutritious. Yes, use it with the vines. Alright, now we're gonna grab that axe. Not sure whether or not I should break the wine shelf or not. Okay, yeah. Um, this door. Oh wait, no, because this is wood in here. <coughs> yep, yeah, yeah, easy, easy. All right. Whoa, this guy's got a sick lava lamp. Man, he's, he's a lot cool. Is that a tinfoil hat over here? Oh, I needed that. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, he must be around there. Now we use the lava lamp here. Whoa. What is this? A bottle. Yes, of course. Of course. What am I thinking? Now we put the bottle in there! Wow. And the secret passage opens. Oh yeah, baby! Oh crap! Stop right there! Okay! Whoa, whoa, wait! Uh, Mr. Lambert, sir, it's me, Joe! I don't know you. What are you doing in my house? You, you sent me here, remember? I've done no such thing. For an intruder, you're not very bright, you know that? For all the commotion you caused getting in here, you might as well have brought a bulldozer. Now, you have exactly five seconds to explain what you're doing here. Or so help me God, I'm pulling this trigger and sending you on your way. Five. I, I, I was sent here. Are you in India, Four. Joe? Joe's kind of stupid. Why you? Three. From the future. You told me to find you. To warn you about the end of the world. Two. Y you were old, uh, with white hair, and you got shot. Oh, God, please don't shoot me, Mr. Lambert. This, this, you gave me this. Uh, it's an inter-something, uh, chrono. It's a time machine. He's I... Gave you that? Yes! I've never seen anything like it. But on the back, that's my family's signet. I made this? It's simply magnificent. I gave this to you? Why? Who are you? Name's Joe, sir. I, I'm, I'm just a janitor at the Archon the building. Pack. I found you in a room with a big, round door in the basement labs this morning, and you, you were dying. You said you'd come from 40 years in the future to stop the end of the world. I, I, I guess I was the only one around, so you gave me this and told me to find you and tell you all this, and I've been there. The future, I mean. A bunch of times. And you were right, Mr. Lambert. Everyone's gone. It's true. I can My God, so it did come to pass. They really did it, those greedy goddamn bastards. I told them this would happen. Wait, I was dying? How? You said you'd been shot. I had to actually find you at the, uh, uh, the morgue to get this address. Shot? By whom? No, wait, don't say anything else. You succeeded in finding me, which means anything you tell me from this point on could alter the course of action that brought you to my doorstep. The less I know, the better. So, you've seen the future. What did you see? 
It's like a bad dream, sir. Everyone's gone. Buildings are coming apart. It's all just quiet. What happened, Mr. Lambert? It is Doctor, Doctor Lambert. And considering all the effort you just went through to find me, not to mention bearing witness to the horrific outcome of the biggest breakthrough in the history of science, I suppose I owe you some kind of explanation. Well, hell yeah. Oh, they're sending cats. I was 24 when I got hired by Archon, or Athena, as it was called back then. Athena was one of the many weapons R&D companies formed during the Second World War. Unlike other R&D companies that had retooled themselves to pursue peacetime activities after the war, Athena had made enough money to continue chasing the next big thing in defense technologies. They were betting the farm on post-war Soviet expansion, raising the level of government paranoia to create a lucrative market for esoteric weapons research. I'd say they made the right bet. Still a theoretical physicist at MIT, my thesis on the possibility of time travel via dimensional membranes got published shortly after I was hired in 1961. Company heads were so impressed, they gave me a team and a budget. Development exceeded even my own expectations, and after only six years, we had the first primitive version of the time machine up and running. Our first successful trials involved sending simple objects into the future with a timed return. But with Archon running out of money, that was all the company bigwigs needed to secure a big fat contract with the Department of Defense. Apparently, we had sold them on the idea that the technology could be used to go back in time and strangle communism in its cradle. Damn, commies. The reality, of course, was that it couldn't. Due to the laws of causality, you can't travel back in time beyond the point where time travel was invented. Hmm. And sooner or later, we had to explain that to our benefactors. When they started pushing for progress reports, Archon management had to come clean, but instead chose to ease government concerns by claiming the technology could be used to bring back advanced weapons from the future. But this, too, was a lie. Please, tell me more. At this point, we'd already had our first of many human trials, and we knew there would be no weapons. In fact, our results were as terrifying as they were baffling. Time pilots returned frenzied and confused, raving about empty streets and human remains. At first, we assumed the city had suffered a Soviet attack in the near future and had been evacuated as a result. But as we pushed on further, the terrible reality became clear. Time pilots started returning fatally ill, dying within a day or two from painful convulsions. Some never returned. We lost several pilots, machine prototypes, and other equipment. When the first contamination erupted in the lab, we were completely unprepared, losing three lab technicians to what we later identified as an incredibly aggressive airborne virus. Well, this one has a lot of dialogue. Although we weren't equipped to handle biohazards of this magnitude, management insisted we contain and study it. To keep our pilots and the virus alive long enough to study, we co-opted experimental cryotechnology from another project, Lazarus, and established a makeshift virus lab. Once again, the bigwigs managed to spin our setbacks into a success story for the Department of Defense, now claiming that the virus could be cultivated for use as a biological weapon. The team threatened to resign, 
but outrage was swiftly quenched by promises of massive salary increases and stock options. Money. I didn't take the bribe. I'd witnessed the lethal efficiency of the virus firsthand. I knew there was only one way this was going to end, so I handed in my resignation and set up shop out here. For over a year, I've been working to recreate the technology to bring me back in time and prevent mankind's extinction from ever happening. <clears throat> and now you're here, the Harbinger of Doom at my doorstep, wearing a boiler suit. Who could have imagined that Judgment Day would begin like any other Monday in May? In any case, unfathomable as it may be that you were able to bring this information to me. Knowing is only half the battle. Preventing the outbreak will require more than just your tenacity. Me? Wait, what? Yes, I'm afraid I must rely on you one more time. You must go back to Archon and prevent the outbreak. No, no, that that's, uh, I mean, I'm really honored and everything, but... Believe me, you're the last person in the world I want to entrust with this, and I mean that quite literally. But by this time tomorrow, the entire city will have succumbed to chaos, panic, and death. You're here now, and you're all I've got. Wait, but what about you? Can't you fix this, Doc? Don't you have a plan? I can't go myself, because that would break the law of causality. The only reason you are here to warn me now is because I was there to send you. And the only reason I was there to send you is because I was able to bring my work to fruition here. But... We've no time to waste. It's the only way. You told me you found me this morning, correct? Yes, but... That means I failed to stop it, and the outbreak has already begun. The time pilot for today's trial must have brought the virus back from the future which then somehow got out of the containment chamber and spread. That pilot is patient zero. I need you to destroy the supercomputer system controlling the time machine. All the research data is stored there too. You must destroy it before the time machine departs. I'm reconfiguring your device to send you back one day earlier. This should allow you ample time to return to Archon and get inside. On the other shore from here, about 500 yards down the road, is a rest stop. You'll find a van there, fueled and ready to go. Oh, I already have a ride. Which won't be there yesterday, you ninny. Now stop interrupting me. One last thing, and I need you to listen carefully because this is very, very important. Make sure you do not meet the earlier version of you. Why? What will happen? No one knows for sure. It's one of the conundrums not yet accounted for. There are theories, of course. None of them pleasant. Now, let's get you ready. Yes, let's. I'm gonna go meet myself, see what happens. Dang, this chapter's long. How did I get myself into this? I nearly got killed trying to reach Dr. Lambert, thinking he had a plan. But he didn't. And it turns out it's me. I'm the plan. At least I don't have to walk back. This van's not as cool as the ambulance, but it has its charm. And it sure was nice of him to pack me lunch. I wish he'd pack me a can opener for the beans, though. And some gas for the Bunsen burner. But I'm sure I'll think of something. I've got several hours of driving ahead of me, after all. It'll be almost morning before I get to Archon. I just hope I have enough time. The night before... Alright, Chapter 8. Sounds like a pretty good spot to leave right there. Chapter 8. Outside of Archon.
see if we can't stop these ninnies from destroying the world as we know it. Do a little disco while you're at it. Come on, join me. Saturday Night Fever is always there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, be sure to slap that like button. And if you want to see more stuff like this, please be sure to subscribe down below. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. <gasps> what the heck? This cannot be good. It's a doppelganger. A much bigger doppelganger.